Alright guys, today we're going to have a look at how to animate this gremlin character. So it looks a little bit confusing at first, but there's actually not too much to worry about. There's lots of little attributes we can change, but overall it will be pretty straightforward. So we're not actually animating the joints directly. I'm sure you'd be familiar with uh, the actual character controls or a control rig, and this is no different. So what we have here is, for example, over on the wings we have these, which allow us to control the spread of our wings. If I select the spread one attribute and then holding the middle mouse button click and drag left and right we can actually make the wings spread out or go more narrow. Uh, we've got similar attributes or similar controls all over the body. For example we've got one here for the tail. We can rotate our tail as well. We've got one for the head. like that. Uh, the legs are made with IK handles. IK handles basically, if you have a look, if I just move this up, it will actually bend at the elbow. So that's pretty neat. It saves a bit of animation work. And so that means with our root control, I should, again I've selected the joint there, so I should actually select this controller here. If I just drag this, it'll move the whole body down, but it will keep the legs in place and then the knees will bend. So you can get some really like natural animations going, uh, and it's pretty straightforward. So, for example, what I'm going to do here is something pretty basic. We're just going to make a flying animation, and so my animation is going to play from frame 10. Uh, we'll just add two. 250 here. Um, this is our playback range slider. So the length of our animation and the length of our playback aren't the same. So my animation goes from 10 to 250, but I've set it to only play from 10 to 100. I'm just going to drag this out so we have a bit more visibility on the timeline so we're at our full range. And I'm going to set some attributes at frame 10. And we're going to do keyframe animation. So uh, if you're not familiar with keyframe animation, Basically, you're setting an attribute at a certain time, could be translation, could be rotation, and then uh, at a different keyframe with a different that same attribute key differently. So, for example, X position 0 at 10 and then X position 50 at 100. Between 0 and 100, or 10 and 100, uh, we can um, basically, from the first keyframe to the last keyframe, it will automatically animate it between them. So that's pretty neat. Uh, I'm sure most of you are probably familiar with this already, but it's just good to be uh, to have a bit of a refresher. So we've got this one here. Uh, what I'm actually going to do, we'll start with the wings. And so at frame 10, what I want is the wings to start off at the top of their flight. And so what I'm going to do is, uh, let's see, let's just set it up at the top here. And then let's rotate this one. You can also again just punch in numbers here. So let's say we'll make this 20. Uh, this one will be negative 20. And I'm gonna I'm gonna keyframe these. So these are the two attributes we're working with: the rotation on Y and the translation on Z. I'm going to key these. I've also got auto key turned on. So now if I just jump to a frame and change an attribute, it would automatically itch. Oh, I haven't keyed. Oh, sorry. I forgot to key this one as well. So, we'll key this one as well. And then, for example, a random frame. Every time we change an attribute, it will automatically insert a keyframe. If we didn't have auto key on, you can see it hasn't inserted the red line, which represents a keyframe here. And so, we would have to manually key these. But that also makes it uh, a little bit more straightforward because then you can key the individual attributes. So, we've got our position at 10, and I want these wings to be in this position. I'm going to use these spread controllers here just to basically spread out these wings. So, I'll have them a little bit spread out here. Let's say 3.1 works pretty well. I'll also have to key that as well. Uh, now my animation is playing at 30 frames per second, so again we need to think about 
how often a dragon or a gremlin sort of creature would flap its wings like this. Uh, I kind of want to sort of slow uh, flap. Uh, so what we need to do is we'll jump ahead to say, hmm, let's go to say frame 50. This is 40 frames and it's 30 frames a second, so it's a little over a second for the um, wings to go down and then we'll do a similar amount of time for them to go up again. So at this position, let's start with these. Um, I'm just going to do a pretty basic sort of animation. So I'll put these, say, down here. Oh, I didn't have auto key turned on. So, down here. And what's this one here? Also change the anim rotation. Let's make this 15. And we'll also, I'll make this one negative 15. Uh, it's pretty easy to remember because they're facing opposite. Make these a bit lower actually. Uh, we might just adjust this a little bit more. So instead, we'll actually make this 20, 22. There's a bit of geometry clipping there. So actually, let's make it 25. And just for this, this one here, we'll do negative 25. And that's at 50. Uh, well, just to change the spread control slightly. Uh, make it maybe come in a little bit there. So, uh, for example, we can see the spread is automatically uh, reducing, so the wings are kind of tightening up. Uh, similarly, if we were to look at this, we can actually see our Maya is automatically basically doing the frames for us. So we just need the keyframes. Uh, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to select this and this. And I'm actually going to copy this over here because I want the exact same ones to be. So it's basically returning to this position. But so it goes down and then back up like so. But I'm not going to play it all along the timeline. I'm actually going to play it, for example, to get a perfect loop. We're actually going to stop one before that 90. So we'll set it to 89. So 10 to 89, and it should be a perfect loop. It's not quite perfect. I'm not sure what's happened there. Oh, it's because of, I forgot to copy the spread controls over. So we'll just give ourselves a bit more room. So I copied these ones, but not these ones. So we'll take this. We'll copy the keyframes with. So if you copy, if you have, if I had all of these selected, I could copy them all. They're essentially overlapping. This is, essentially represents all the keyed attributes. So we should be able to just paste that here. Again, we'll change our frame back range to uh, 89. From 10 to 89, you can just punch it in there. Again, as I said, this is the start and end of the animation, but this represents the actual playback range. Perfect. So that's pretty cool. And that's the basis of our animation. Um, while I remember, I'll actually just m move his body down like this. This isn't keyed, so this isn't animated. It's always going to be like this because his legs are going to be a bit closer to his body while he's in flight. Like so. Let's move on to the tail now. So let's go to frame 10. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have his tail basically. Yeah, so this is where I want it at 10. Uh, these are the attributes that I'm going to be changing. So we'll key these. You could just key them all, but if you decide to make a change that you want to affect every frame, well, basically through the whole animation, so it's not animated, but it's keyed, then it's only going to affect the keyframe it's on. But you can always just break the connection if you want to and then set it how you want. For example, if I do S, it will key everything. But we're just going to work with what we've got. So, where did I go? I went to 50. So, at 50, uh, I want it to be basically the opposite. Like this. And then... 
again what I'm just going to do is copy this keyframe over to 90 and that will let our tail bob up and down because as I said again we're putting the keyframe here but this is essentially representing this so it gets to 89 and then it'll jump back here but this is the same as this so that's how you get a loop going one more thing we'll get the uh, dragons let's close his jaw so this is a jaw controller here select their rotation on it maybe we'll just keep it open a little and I'm going to animate this but let's see what it is rotate X and also this spline length attribute X spline length key selected I'll have it so that it's a bit more opposite uh, or opposite to this so that it's it'll bob up again as I said I'm just kind of making a basic animation we're going to copy this put it back at frame 90 we'll set our playback range back from again not to 90 to 89 so 10 to 89 I start at 10 just because I think it's a uh, a bit neater because if you start at 1 and then I want to go 40 frames ahead it's at 41 it doesn't really matter anyway because when we export it we can set the frame range as well so it's not going to start at 0 just like how I'm doing a playback range now so there's our dragon animation or gremlin rather pretty basic but it's not bad given the time constraints of making a video so that's pretty good now all we have to do is export it I'm actually going to make do two exports. I'm going to export all. I'm not going to without the animation. So what I'm going to do is I'll put it in this Gremlin folder here. We'll call it Gremlin. Uh, let's say mesh. Oh, actually, let's say all because it has a skeleton as well. We'll go export all. Let's we'll have a quick look at our export settings. Remember FBX export. Uh, we'll have smoothing groups on. Export all. And it's just kind of chugging away now. It might present some errors when it's done. But there'll probably just be some minor warnings. Yep, there we go. Nothing major, it still works. And then I'm just going to select the skeleton this time. This is the root joint here. And then I'm going to go File, Export Selection, FBX again. This time we're going to go Animation. Remember I said 10 to 89, because then it jumps back to 10, where 90 would be our step which I believe is the increment of frames and we want to bake that animation to the skeleton so we'll call this gremlin fly then we might get some errors that's cool here's an unreal scene I've prepared earlier we'll do the import on two things we'll import the gremlin first Uh, yep, so that's going to be called, called the skeleton. That's alright. Import all. Uh, just some errors here, but probably nothing to worry about. And then after that, we'll import our animation. Animation length is the exported time. The skeleton for this will be the skeleton we just imported. Import all. And now this should play back our animation. Yep. And you can see it loops perfectly because we went from 10 to 89 and then where it would go to frame 9, it jumps back to 10. So that's pretty good. Basic animation, but you get the idea. I hope that's been helpful for you guys and I wish you luck with your project. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.